Что вы думаете о роли влияния научной фантастики на развитие цивилизации? Меняется ли степень этого влияния сейчас? Yeah, the process is, I think, a parallel process. They did grow together because their civilization, or, I mean, I'm not sure which, but this should be a parallel, or actually civilization is a product. Um, the science fiction is a product of civilization, or civilization is a product of science fiction. I mean, science fiction, science fiction as a... As a Science fiction as a specific thing probably is product of civilization, but having some fantasy for future is what actually helped the human civilization, because you could never imagine to have electricity, phone, internet, flying all over the place in. Um, over five, I don't know, in 24 hours being on the other side of the uh, globe. It was all the fantasy, yeah. If the influence becomes stronger or weaker, I would say it's become stronger. It's just me. I have the feeling that things become much more ancient in our time with the development and civilization and science and everything it sounds like a paradox but i think science is bringing people to more to ancient beliefs as a magic and it's where science and magic somehow are meeting i think lots of things that in science is happening now is used to be a magic magical idea in the ancient time That's what I think, yeah. Как вы думаете, почему в мире воображаемого будущего, в научной фантастике, так мало внимания уделяется изобразительному искусству? I have no idea. I don't know. Because... Um, probably because art is as a product of this thing society and industry, I don't know, because, um, because art is about present time and it's difficult to be in the present in future, I would say, yeah. Могло бы искусство получить дополнительный импульс развития, если бы было бы подробно описано в научной фантастике? I don't know, yes and no, yes and no, it's a paradox, I think, the art is the moment you forget about past and future, and you get crazily obsessed with the moment, so you somehow forget that there is a future and there is a past, then you get obsessed with the vase is in front of you or whatever is in front of you and you're doing whatever you're doing as a sculpture artist or painter or even conceptual artist conceptual artists are different sometimes they don't need to touch the moment but i think the real idea of creation coming from the moment you forget about future and past but in the same time yes because It will give some touch of freedom, and some touch of getting, yeah, being free of what is in the moment art. So then you will not care. Yeah, probably because art is supposed to be in the present and create an art who is actually good for future. So maybe it's not even a paradox. Once you are in the future, you will be able to make an art for present, for future. Как вы разделяете мир воображаемого и реально прогнозируемого будущего? For me, future is what you expect it to be. 
and thinking about that I think I don't divide, yeah, I do divide them. No, I don't divide them. <laughs> I think I don't see it as two different things because future is always imaginary idea. Because as long as it's not there, you're imagining it. Unless you're in a war and then you make an analytic process of what it's gonna be if you do this and that, like, like a chess play. And unless you do a chess play, your life is always a mixture of your desire and imagination, which will make your future. I think the future is what you imagine it to be. Повлияло ли на вашу творческую деятельность какое-нибудь научно-фантастическое произведение? Yes, Matrix. Matrix and Matrix again. I think, yeah, I like it that Matrix, what he's saying is um, it's not a crazy fantasy and had some, I don't know, something of truth from old ancient beliefs, philosophy, and even something with science and physics. And I think they have a nice mix of possibilities of um, interdisciplinary possibilities of different fields. Yeah, I like that. It inspired me a lot.